Hey folks, this is the fighting nerd, Ray Chalensky, and his co-host, Jolly Roger, coming to you from the Resistance Bunker. This is another video about sharp, pointy things. You have to spell this out, because if you use the actual word, the YouTube gobs will punish you. I'm going to talk about K-N-I-F-E. S. Now, if you carry these particular tools in London these days, they will confiscate them. Oh, hell, I'm just going to say it. I'm not going to go around beat around the bush. If they ban me, they ban me, or punish me, they punish me. Knives. They've been having a spurt of stabbings. A lot of stabbings in London, and now they're on an anti-knife campaign. Now, not too long ago, it was an anti-gun campaign. And as is, was predicted by anybody with half a brain, when they took even the few guns that Brits were allowed to have out away from them, knife crime skyrocketed. Go figure. The thing is this, folks. If you make all the knives disappear magically tomorrow, the next day you're going to hear about somebody getting their head caved in with a hammer and their wallet stolen. And then people wanting to, oh, normal people, a lot of mining people wanting to avoid getting their head bashed in with a hammer and their wallet stolen might start carrying hammers too, or some other blunt instrument. And in your typ typical left-minded folly, the liberals of the world will be screaming, ban hammers. We must ban the hammers. Because and, you know, I've beaten a dead horse. People have been talking about this for years. You can't blame an object for people's behavior. Knives are not stabbing anybody. Criminals are stabbing people who have largely been disarmed because they're law-abiding people and they're not carrying knives or guns, or any implement of self-defense, because it's illegal to defend yourself in Great Britain to all extents and purposes, for all intents and purposes. There was an incident, uh, an incident where an uh, elderly gentleman, in the course of defending his wife from some home invaders, wounded one and killed another with a kitchen knife. The man was arrested. Now, he wasn't charged, but he was arrested. Why? You know, he got two thugs in his house. He's an elderly gentleman. He puts up a fight. He wins. He lives. His wife lives. One of them dies. And they still take the old gentleman into custody. And I have, can't help but wonder if this hadn't gone pretty much international, if it hadn't gone viral all over the planet, this story, and there hadn't been all kinds of public attention, would he have been charged? Because England, particularly London, has gone a full-blown statist. They, wanted to, they want people to depend on the state for everything, for their health care, for their food, for their, own person, for their protection. And the state, their government, has failed miserably. And that's the real point of this video. It's not so much pro-knife rights, pro-ground rights, pro-self-defense. This is a symptom of statism. And looking towards any institution to be the solution to the problems of individuals. The criminals
don't rely on the state. Now, I'm not saying that a lot of them are, aren't on some sort of public assistance. Most of them probably are. But they go out and they victimize people. Because the people have been stripped of their individual right to protect themselves effectively. They can go out and they can wreak havoc. And if they get arrested, the punishments are compar comparatively light. Chances are they'll be turned out and in an endeavor to reform them. And since it is illegal, effectively, to defend yourself, especially with any kind of implement of personal protection in Great Britain, criminals flock to the place where they're least likely to encounter resistance from their victims. And right now that's London. All over Great Britain, but London is even worse. The mayor of London, Khan, has said that only cowards carry a knife, and there's no excuse to carry a knife. No, that's absolutely wrong. Now, I don't know. Maybe he has never had occasion to use a knife on a daily basis. I understand he comes from a working class background, though, so I find that hard to believe. What about a fisherman? I mean, commercial fisherman. Should he be carrying, does he have a use for a knife every day? Mm -hmm. Or anybody that works at a factory that might need to open a box. A box cutter is a knife. So, what, I mean, are they they're going to have to, like, sign out their box cutters when they go to work? Now, I carry a knife every day. Here it is, out of my pocket. And I open it one-handed. Oh, my God. Use this today. Didn't victimize anybody. Didn't cut anybody. I opened a box. Used it yesterday. Notice a flaying, uh, a flaying thread, a fraying thread on my jacket. Didn't want to just pull it out to shred the whole thing. So I whipped out the knife and I cut the thread. Now, I didn't have to use a knife for that. Much easier than trying to break it and hope you don't accidentally pull the whole thing apart. Now here, here's another bit of evil. I close the knife one-handed. Alright. So, does this mayor think it's the only reason that anybody would possibly carry a knife is to victimize someone? Is he that stupid? Or is he that dense? Or is he just that desperate to blame everything but his policies and his failure on something other than himself. Only cowards carry knives. They got boxes in London where you turn in your knife. Only cowards carry knives. Is it cowardly for a law abiding citizen in Britain who maybe has a family who has been stripped? of any semblance of right to defend himself, of, of his rights to defend himself with a firearm. Is it cowardly for him to want to be somewhat even if his family, if he is confronted with a knife, protect himself and protect his family? I covered this in another video, folks. There is no good way to deal with a man with a, a deal with a knife wielding attacker empty handed. There are only ways that suck less than others. And if you are an adult protecting your children, you might not be able to run away. So what do you do? You've got nothing to put it between that blade and your kids but your body. And that's the way 
that the mayor and government of London and then pretty much Great Britain in general wanted. So you can say that they would actually see whether you get cut to ribbons or maybe your kids get cut. Then you just carry a knife. And as I said, the self-defense aspect, the self-protection aspect of it is a side point. Because there are lots of things you use for a knife, use a knife for every day. I have a cold steel recon one in my collection. It has a place of honor in in the collection. It has it when I was retired at carry for a, a different EDC. I had a piece of crap car, had a muffler wire, wired on with mechanics wire. It broke in another place, was scrooching sparks down the road when I was a good 50 miles away from home. Didn't have any other tools but that old Recon 1. And I actually used that old Recon 1 to hack through a bunch of mechanics wire. Dull the crap out of it, but it worked. There is an excuse for carrying a knife on a daily basis. A knife is a funny thing. When you need one, you usually really need one. Now you can open boxes with other things and everything like that. But the point of it is, it's a tool. It's meant to make those tasks easier. A knife is a tool. Sometimes it is a tool of self-protection. Sometimes it is a, a tool of victimization. But taking all the knives on the street is a pointless endeavor, as I said. Hand wavy up. All the knives are gone in London. Ten minutes after that happens, you're going to hear about somebody getting their head bashed in with a ball peen hammer. <laughs> An hour after that happens, you're going to hear about another person getting their head bashed in was something. And yes, they are that stupid. The leftists in any country in the world will then be calling for hammer control or golf club, golf club control. I did a bit, kind of a, a comical video called Banning the Opposable Thumb because that's the real evil. You wouldn't be able to use a knife or a gun or a golf club or anything if you didn't have the unopposable thumb. And it's just idiotic. And it's destructive. And he's got police working overtime over there, stopping and frisking people, searching for illegal knives. And that is the point. I am convinced that the governments purposely allow this kind of violence to take place, to justify giving the government more power and taking away people's, yes, let's call it human rights. Let's just call them what they are. Everybody's always yelling about human rights, not even constitutional rights, because this is a, a global phenomenon. Human, one of the human rights is self-protection. That is being taken away, and it's been taken away for a reason, because now he's expanded the police ability to stop people and search them for no other reason than they might have a knife. In New York and the United States, let's face it, folks, they could pretty much stop and frisk you for anything after 9-11. And with London's getting away with it, New York's getting away with it, other cities are going with it. And this is allowed to happen. Now, 911 aside, whether you think it was an inside job or it wasn't, or I personally think they knew something was going to happen, they made it knew what was going to happen, and they allowed it to happen. I don't think they did it. I think they allowed it to happen for the purpose of getting things like the Patriot Act passed. That's an opinion. But this thing, this thing. first, what few guns. 
there were allowed and private units in Britain have pretty much been taken away. Then they start working on the knives. And then they bring in thousands of Middle Eastern immigrants, which are from a knife culture. Middle East, try to find an adult male over there that doesn't have a knife on it. They bring in all of these Middle Eastern immigrants. Deprive people of any means of effectively defending themselves. Watch the chaos ensue and then say, we need more power to stop the chaos. Hegelian dialectic. It's happening in London and it's going to happen in the United States and it's going to happen throughout the free world until the free world isn't free anymore. So the knife crime issue or the gun crime issue or the hammer crime issue is a symptom. It's a warning. Take the guns, take the knives. Pretty soon, even if you resist an attacker with your hands and feet, it's going to be illegal. You may as well just invite the criminals into your home, have them eat your food, let them watch your TV, cower in your bedroom, and hope they don't kill you. Because that's the way the government and the the government in London seems to want it, and that's the way I think a lot of governments hope it gets to be, because by that time, we'll be begging the government to help us and do anything, and be willing to give up anything for a little bit of safety. That's what most people will do. Not what I would do. That's what most people will do. Yes, yes, we'll give you your knives, we'll give you your hammers, we'll give you anything. Just keep these animals away from my kids. It is a situation that has been and is being created on purpose by the powers that be to further enslave people. Now that I have pitched my tent firmly in Crazy Town, but I, I'm going to let you think about what I just said. So, remember to draw your knife only at just purpose, and to sheave your blades only with honor. And if you're in London, hide those puppies so they don't take them away. Probably shouldn't say that because I'm telling people to break the law. Okay. Don't hide your knives. Just kidding. Yeah. Give up your knives. But keep your hammer ready. That said, this is Ray Chalinski, the fighting nerd, and his co-host, Jolly Roger, bidding you good night from the Resistance Bunker.